Welcome to this video tutorial from Annie's. Today we will be going over how to make the Moroccan Tiles Afghan, designed by Rena V. Stevens. This style of afghan is very trendy right now, so I've been looking forward to being able to make this with you today. We will be going over how to do the beginning cluster, large cluster, cluster, as well as the pico stitch and how to join the squares together so we can make this beautiful afghan. You can download the pattern below. All right, let's grab our yarn and hook and let's get started. To make the Moroccan tiles afghan, you're going to need worsted weight yarn. And I, by some miracle, had the Vanna's choice that they specified in the pattern. Don't you just love when that happens? <laughs> so I will be using these two shades for the pattern. And then you also need an I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, a tapestry needle, and then a locking stitch marker. To begin the afghan, on square A, you're going to make 18 of these. So for round one, you're going to do a chain six, three, four, five, six, and then you're going to slip stitch in the first chain that you made to form a ring. So I'm just gonna insert my hook and slip stitch there, and you can see my ring. And now I am going to do chain four, one, two, three, four, and then into the center ring, I'm going to slip stitch. So it makes a little loop, kind of like a petal of a flower. And we're going to repeat this seven times. Three, four, back into the ring, slip stitch. One, two, three, four, into the ring, slip stitch. One, two, three, four, and a slip stitch. Keep doing this around. This really is a cute little flower I'm making. <laughs> I like the color of this flower too, actually. It's like a little marigold. I think that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Nope, six. I've done six. So I need to do this one more time for the repeat. So if you are running out of space in the ring, you can just cinch it closer by gently moving the little petals over. Three, four. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now I'm ready to do my last chain four, two, three, four, and then slip stitch into the beginning slip stitch. So right here, I will do a slip stitch. And then you fasten it off and we're ready to do round two. For round two, you switch colors and to begin round two, it says to slip stitch to join. So in the little petal chain four space, I'm just going, going to insert my hook, place the new color on and then drop a loop and then I'm just holding the tail with my back, my finger there. So for round two, it says that we need to chain four, one, two, three, four, and then slip stitch in the next chain space. So you can see we're working this space right here. So into this space, I will slip stitch. And then I will repeat this around two, three, four, and then into this next chain four space, do a slip stitch. And I'm going to continue this around until I get to the beginning where I will 
slip stitch into the beginning chain space. Let's do round four together where we talk about the clusters. So to begin, we put our hook in any of the chain four spaces and we're going to switch to our color, the first color we used at the beginning of round one. And then you slip stitch to join. And now we're going to do our beginning cluster. The beginning cluster, large cluster, and cluster are all going to be worked into the same chain four space right here. And then we're going to do a cluster, chain three, cluster, chain three into the next space, and then cluster, large cluster, cluster. So it's like a big bloom and then a singular, big bloom, singular. There's a lot of repeats in this round, um, so it gets a little confusing, but hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. So to begin the cluster, we need to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then we yarn over twice, insert hook into this chain four space, and pull up a loop. And then we're gonna yarn over, pull through two loops, and do that twice. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And then we leave this stitch on our hook, and then we're gonna do what we just did two times. So we did it once, we're gonna do it again by yarning over twice, insert hook into the chain four space, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And a good way to check yourself on these different clusters is at the very end of the special stitch, it says yarn over and pull through how many loops that you need to do. So if you look at the beginning cluster, it says yarn over and pull through three loops on your hook. So you can see we've done it correctly. So yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And then we're going to do a chain four, one, two, three, four. And that sets us up to now do a large cluster back into the same chain four space. To do a large cluster, you're going to yarn over three times, insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're gonna do it again. So I just yarned over three times, back into the chain four space, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That was close. <laughs> and then yarn over, pull through. Oh, I did do it wrong. I did it right the first time. Okay, let me just start that part over again. So yarn over three times, back into the chain four space, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Yarn over three times, back into the chain four space, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And then you can see at the end of large cluster, it says yarn over and pull through four loops on your hook. So we know we've done it correctly and we can finish out the large cluster. And then it says we need to do chain four and a cluster. So let's do a cluster together. To do a cluster, you yarn over twice, insert your hook into that same chain four space because we're making the bloom portion and then drawing up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we do that twice. So we're gonna do it again. Oh, sorry, we do that three times. So one more time. Pull through two, pull through two. And again, we can check ourselves at the end. It says yarn over and pull through four loops on your hook and we've got four loops on our hook. So we did it correctly, yay. You can see we have the beginning cluster, the large cluster and a regular cluster. So this is what I was calling the bloom. So now we are ready to chain three, one, two, three 
and do our singular crochet into this chain four space. So we're going to do a cluster into this chain four space. So we've already chained three and then we're going to cluster by yarning over twice, inserting our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we do this again, drawing up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. One last time, drawing up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we have one, two, three, four loops on our hook, so we've done it correctly. Yarn over, pull through all four, and then chain three. And that sets us up to then do another bloom into this chain four space here. So let's just do the beginning portion of this together. So we're going to cluster by yarning over twice, inserting our hook, drawing up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, back into the same space, drawing up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and then one last time. And we have four loops on our hook, so we can yarn over and pull through all four loops. So then we make another large cluster right here, and then a cluster all into the chain four space. So you continue that pattern of a bloom of a large cluster with other two other clusters, singular, bloom, singular, bloom, singular, all the way around, and that is how you do round four. I finished round four, and you can see that the cluster, large cluster, cluster, are in the corners, so it makes this square. So now I am ready for round five. It says we need to change colors. And I am going into the corner right here because I joined and it says into the next chain space. We need to join with the new color. So into this corner stitch right here or corner, I am going to maybe, there we go. <laughs> My tail was getting in the way, okay. I am going to chain one and do four single crochets all into the same space right here. So inserting my hook, doing one, two, three, four, all into that same chain space right here. After I do that, it says I need to chain one and into this next space right here, I'm gonna do five single crochets. So into this chain four space, I will place five single crochets. Two, three, four, and five and then three single crochets into the next chain three space. One, two, three, and we do it again. We repeat the three single crochets. Two, three, and then we're going to do five single crochets into the next chain four space so into this space right here, we're gonna do five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And it says repeat from asterisk around. So going back to that star, we're chaining one, and then five single crochets into the next chain four space. So we're basically just making this corner. Two, three, four, five. So we just went around the corner 
can see, and then we're going to repeat what we did here down on this side. So after we've done our five single crochets into this space, then we're doing three single crochets, three single crochets, just like we did here. So I'm gonna finish round five and then we'll do round six together. Here I am at the round, the end of round five, ready to begin round six. For round six, I'm going to slip stitch loosely into the next two single crochets, and then I'm going to place my stitch marker so I can know where that's first, that second slip stitch is. And I apologize, my toddler got into my slip stitch um, case, and so I'm using a bobby pin. <laughs> I need to go get some new slips, uh, stitch markers. So I just did a slip stitch into that first single crochet and then a slip stitch into the second single crochet. And it can be kind of hard to see where those single crochets are because of the chain one join at the beginning of round five. So a way to check yourself is to make sure you have two single crochets left in this corner before the chain one. And you can see I do. I have this one that's unworked and this one that's unworked. So I have done my slip stitches correctly. And then I place my stitch marker or my bobby pin <laughs> into that second, into the last slip stitch that I made, the second one. And then let's talk about the repeat for this round here. So first we're going to do chain two and then skip the next two single crochets. So one, two, skip those. And I'm going to slip stitch into the next chain one space. So right here at the very corner, tip of the corner, I'm going to do my slip stitch. And then it says that I need to chain two, skip the next two single crochets. So one, two, and I'm gonna work into this single crochet right here by single crocheting into that stitch. Okay. And then it says I need to chain four, two, three, four, skip next single crochet. So skip that one. Working into this one, I need to do a single crochet. And I need to repeat that again. So chain four, two, three, four, skip one single crochet and work into the next single crochet by doing a single crochet. So we did that repeat, it said to do it twice, we did it twice, and now we need to chain four, one, two, three, four, and then we need to skip two single crochets. So one, two, working into this single crochet right here, we're going to do a single crochet. Now we're to another repeat. We'll do this section twice by chaining four, skip one single crochet, work into the next single crochet, and do a single crochet, and then do it again. Two, three, four, skip one single crochet, working into the next single crochet, single crochet. So let's talk about that repeat. So it's like we have a bubble, bubble, straight, bubble, bubble. Hopefully these nicknames I'm giving these <laughs> are helping because there's lots of repeats and it can get kind of confusing. So you can see we only skipped one single crochet for the bubbles and two for this section. So it's a little more straight. So after we do these bubble, bubble, it says we need to repeat from the asterisk around. So going back to the front of round six, it says chain two, one, two, skip the next two single crochets, one, two, working into the chain one space, we need to um, slip stitch. And then we just do the same thing that we started at right here. So we're just repeating that section. So I'm gonna work that all the way around for round six and we'll do round seven together. So here I am in the, in the middle of round seven 
We will go back at the beginning and do this portion together. This is the start of my round where my bobby pin is, my stitch marker. <laughs> um, so we will do this portion together, but I just wanted to show you what is happening for round seven before I rip this out and do this part with you. So we are, our old square looked like this and this was the start of a corner, this was a corner, this was a corner, this was a corner. And now we are making corners in the middle of the rows, of the sections. Um, so it's kind of becoming a diamond shape. Um, so anyway, it looks very, very cute. But I just wanted to show you guys that if you're having trouble visualizing it. So now I'm going to frog back to my stitch marker so that we can do the start of round seven together so you guys can get off to a good start. So to begin round seven, it says we need to slip stitch loosely into the next chain. So you can see we have our chain space here and we have these chains. So it wants us to go into this chain right here and slip stitch loosely. And then it says slip stitch in the same chain space. So into this space right here, we're going to slip stitch loosely and then place our stitch marker on that slip stitch that we just made. And these stitch markers are just to make sure at the end of the round that we are joining correctly. Okay, so now we can ooh, chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Did I do that? One, two, three, four. There we go. Five, two, three, four, four five. There we go. <laughs> chain five, slip stitch in the next chain space. So you can see we have our next chain space right here. We're going to slip stitch into that space right here. And then we're gonna do it again. One, two, three, four, five, and slip stitch into the chain space. We've done that twice now, and now we chain five again. Two, three, four, five. Skip the next chain space, so don't work this one. Right there, skip this one. Skip the next chain space, and we're going to treble crochet into this space right here. And so if you are looking, mine's a little stretch out because I already worked it, but if you remember my nicknames for the different sections, I said this was a bubble, bubble, straight, bubble, bubble. This is where we did our chain or skip two. So this is the middle of our square. So you can check yourself to make sure you're doing it correctly by skipping this first chain space and then trebling into this middle one right here. So to treble, we're gonna yarn over twice, insert our hook into that space, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then chain five, three, four, five, and do another treble crochet, yarn over twice, and don't get messed up. You're working this chain space right here. So don't accidentally work this one right here. Going into this space where we worked our first treble crochet is where you're going to do another treble crochet. So you can see we have two treble crochets into this chain space here. And then we're going to chain nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then it says we need to slip stitch into the ninth chain from our hook. So that first um, chain that we made is where we're going to slip stitch. And we just made a new corner and it looks kind of funny right now. So let's finish the repeat so it, it stabilizes and looks a little more normal. So then we do a treble crochet back into the same space the same chain space that we worked the other two trebles in. And then we do chain five, three, four, five, yarn over twice, going back into that chain space, we're going to work another treble crochet. <clears throat> 
So you can see that we have done one, two, three, four treble crochets into this chain space right here, plus our little chain nine slip stitch, which is our corner. So you can see now we're making the bend of the diamond. We're going this way and now we're going to go this way and our next corner will be right here. So that's how you do round seven. Just continue on around and let's pick back up together for square B round seven. Here is square B after I've completed round six. So I'm gonna do the beginning of round seven with you and you can see it's basically the same as uh, square A except for there's a slight color variation between these last few rows here. But basically everything else is the same. So let's do round seven together. You can see I joined right here and so to begin round seven, it says that we need to join in that same chain two space that we ended round six in. So grabbing my different color, I'm going to join and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then after I chain five, then I'm going to slip stitch in the next chain space. So into this chain space, I'm going to slip stitch and do it again. One, two, three, four, five. And then into this chain space, I will slip stitch. So I've done that twice. And then I chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to skip the next chain space and I'm going to work into where the corner will be right here. So skipping this one and working into this one, I'm going to make my corner. And I do that by yarning over twice and doing a treble crochet, chain five, one, two, three, four, five, yarning over twice, treble crochet. And this is basically the same thing as square A to make these corners and for round seven. The only main difference is the beginning portion since we're changing colors. So after I do that treble, then I'm going to do chain nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, slip stitch into my first chain that I made like that. And then I'm going to do a treble. And remember, I'm going back into this chain space right here, not working this. These are my trebles that I made and I'm going all into the same chain space. So I'm doing a treble crochet back into this chain space right here. And then I chain five, three, four, five. And I do another treble crochet back into that chain space like that. So we have our first corner made right here. So I'm going to continue making round seven of square B, and then we will show how to join squares um, into strips. We are now ready to talk about joining squares. So this is my A square, and this is my B square. And in the pattern, it has a nice assembly diagram. So you can see I'm going to be working my joins of squares and strips this way. Um, you can do it vertically if you want. You just have to be consistent throughout. But just for this example, I'm going to pretend like I am doing it this way. So I have my A on my right here because I'm going to be having it on. This is the one I'm going to be having A on. And then B is over here on my left. 
So I am going to be working this seam right here. And just for this demonstration, I'm going to be working these two squares. And then to do, once you have your five blocks, um, strips, once you work these five seams or four seams, so there are five blocks in a horizontal strip, then you're going to work the two strips together along that seam right there. So you'll have five blocks in a strip and then five blocks in a strip and you work the seam there. So that's how you do the strips together. But let's just talk about the one blocks, joining the one block together with the other one. Once you understand how to join the squares, joining the seams is basically the same thing. So first you need to lay two squares side by side with the right side facing up and matching the chain spaces. So you can see I've got my corners right here, these chain spaces, these chain spaces worked all the way down like that. And as I'm joining these two squares, I'm going to periodically stop and just make sure so I don't mess up um, because it can get kind of confusing when you're working it together. So it says in the pattern that we need to join with colonial blue. Colonial blue, obviously I don't have blue, but it's whatever color you started with on square A. So for me, it's this mustard brown color. And so it says we need to join in first corner space of right hand square. So I'm gonna insert my hook like this and I'm gonna slip stitch to join and I just split my yarn. There we go. And then I'm going to chain two, one, two. And let me zoom in actually a little bit so you can see a little more closely how to do this. So I just chained two and then I slip stitch in first corner space of left hand square. So here's my corner space. So I'm gonna slip stitch into that space like that. And then I'm going to do chain two and it says slip stitch again in the same corner space of right hand square. So going back into the corner space that I already worked right here, slip stitch again. And then chain two and slip stitch in next space of opposite square. So I'm going to go down to this next chain space and slip stitch. And that is into square B that I just did it. And this is the repeat section. So I'm going to do it again by chaining two and slip stitch into the next space of opposite square. So here is my corner right here. The next space is right here, right there. So I'm going to go insert my hook into that space and slip stitch. And we're just going to continue doing this repeat across. So I'm going to go into this side and slip stitch into square B. Oh, did I already work that square or that space? Let me double check. No, I didn't. So I'm working, you can see I worked this one already. So I'm working this one now. See, that's what I'm talking about. You have to stop and make sure that you are not working a space that you've already done and that the chains are actually lined up. So here's my next space. And then chain two. And here's my next space. Slip stitch that one chain two, back to square A, slip stitch, chain two, square B. Thankfully, this joining does not take too long because you don't have to do each individual single crochet into the chains or anything like that. So as far as seaming goes, this is a pretty quick seam. It works up fairly fast, which is really nice. 
So I'm still doing the repeat of chaining two and slip stitching. Chain two. And this is the space I want now. Chain two. Back down to the right square, my square A. Chain two. Now I've reached my corner of the left hand square. So I'm going to slip stitch, chain two into the corner of my right hand square, slip stitch. And it says chain two and slip stitch again in the same corner space of left hand square. So back into the corner space, which is right here, I will slip stitch again. And then it says fasten off. So I'm gonna do that. And then we'll take a look at the join together and see how cute and nice it looks. So cute. So anyway, join them in strips and then remember join the strips together. So let's go over how to do the edging together. To do the Pico edging, you're going to insert your hook into any of the chain five spaces. So I'm just choosing this one that's by a corner so I can show you how to do the corner here. So you're going to join your yarn and then it says that we need to do a pico. A pico is chain three, two, three. Make sure you're holding that tail there and then you're going to do a single crochet into only one loop, the third one from your hook. And that's how you do the pico. And then it says we need to single crochet into the next chain five space. So my next chain five space is right here. So I will single crochet and then I will do another pico, which is chain three and working into this first chain that I made, I'm going to do a single crochet through the back or, or through one loop only, and then single crochet into the next chain five space. So again, chain three, and then single crochet into that first chain. And now we've reached our corner here. To work the corners, we need to do a single crochet, pico, single crochet into the corner space. So I'm going to single crochet. I'm gonna kind of rotate my work and then do a pico, three chains, single crochet, and then back into the same corner space doing a single crochet. So that made the turn for us. Now we can work this next chain five space right here. So I'm going to pico, single crochet into the third chain from my hook, and then single crochet into that next chain five space. So you just continue that around and it gives you these cute little bumpy edges. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you enjoyed making the Moroccan Tiles Afghan with me. If you do give this afghan a try, I would love to see your progress photos. You can share your photos on Annie's Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram pages, but be sure to use the hashtag Annie's so we can see and share your work. Also, be sure to check out Annie's Crafts at, on YouTube. My name is Rachel Alford, and thank you for joining me today, and I hope you'll join me soon on another one of my Annie's tutorials.